Hello, and welcome to another Woodworking Wisdom. I'm Jason Breach. So today, what we're going to look at, well, the sun's shining, maybe. England, we're just coming out of winter. It's been a bit wet, so hopefully getting outside now. The nights are getting a bit longer, if you like, so a bit more daylight. So you might go in for a walk and everything, so hopefully outside. So this is kind of our spring momentum thing. It's that time of year. So bounce around ideas of what we could do. What can we have as an idea to make? So uh, someone suggested, could you do something as a boot rack? Okay, uh, you do a bit of research. What can you come up with? You can have a boot rack. You can have a boot jack to take it off. You might want a boot scrape. Lots of different things. So could we incorporate those? So that's what we've done. So in behind me, you're going to have a look in a second. Made up simple prototypes. So before I dash into the whole project, I've got a way of looking at what we can use. So today, really, we're going to look at something as a boot rack that you can store outside. You can turn your boots upside down, get the water out, get them clean. Especially when you come back from a walk, they dry off quicker if they're aerated, if you like. So let's have a look. We'll get you a bit nearer. So we've made up really simple MDF prototype. Something I used to do at college, make up a mock-up. So on here, I've got some holes drilled for where my dowels are going to be. On the actual project, they're going to be a little bit bigger. All right, so bigger diameter. We've got our rails, so we can use stacking for that. This end we're going to inlay a brush either side. We have a metal strip down in here. That's your boot scrape. We're obviously going to have our dowels to hang your boots up. This end we're going to have what's classed as a boot jack which will go in and we can also have that removable so if you wanted to take it inside and use it you can we can lift it off put it back on. So we've got our main bits there we can easily get on with that. It's quite simple as a project. Um, the other thing I wanted to do was have it as a, something that might live outside. That's an important part. If you're going to leave this thing outside, so the decking we know is treated, so hopefully that will be good. The dowels, I've also looked at something that's a bit more user-friendly for that. So we've got some Oroco dowel, which will withstand the weathering a little bit. So let's just move our brush and our prototype. So that's what we've got left over. And the reason I did the prototype, not enough if we make a mistake. Should that ever happen? Okay, so we've got our deck boards. Um, these have been lying around a while. Just short off cuts. So come over to the mitre saw or chop saw because we can cut these to length easier on here. So at home, if you've got a hand saw, that'll work, jigsaw, whatever you've got, but just something to cut it squarely. So I've set up lumps I need. So I can cut this purely on there. We've got that little bit trim off the end. As I said, we haven't got a lot of waste on this. So. Back in, got our extractor when we come over. One. So the board we've cut is obviously going to be the two long rails on a moment. We want to cut the short rails to go underneath. I need four. Now the mitre saw we've got here has got an unusual feature, which I've never used before. It's got this little drop down stop. Now, I've already measured this so I know it's adjustable. I can undo the bottom, move it in and out. I've got 350 millimetres. That's quite a nice feature for a mitre saw. So we can literally come up to that. If I want to make it longer, I can undo the side, move the fence out. But we need where we are. Quite easy. So that one stop, stop. So we have our long rails, which are going to have the dowel holes in, our feet, boot jack. So having cut them, we've got our boot jack we don't need. Our two short rails are going to make the legs. So we want to do some stuff on the pillar drill with those. So we're going to go to there now. So we're going to drill some holes in these. Long board, we're going to set out, this, out the way for a second as well, just so we don't need that at the moment. So really it's those two legs. So we've come over to the pillar drill. I've set these up. Uh, I've come in 80 mil from either end. This is going to create the recess holes on the underside of the feet. So it seems a bit weird. We're going to do lots of drilling on this and cutting out before we even cut them in half. So these will get cut in half to make, in reality, two. All right, and then join back together the other way to give it a bit more strength and width. So we set the pillar drill up. We have a 25mm drill, piece of scrap board, 
protect the table. We have a lump stop I've set in so I can come up to there. So this is trying to make things more repeatable again. All right, so quick and easy to set up. We're up to there. I'm gonna just put the extractor on. We can get rid of the waste. Goggles are on. All the way through. So we drilled our fill holes, okay? We're gonna do exactly the same on the other bit. This looks a bit strange at the moment, doesn't it? Okay, this will get cut in half. That's given us the recess point, we can cut these out. That'll make sense as we go on, all right? But quite simple to set up, just those four little holes. So I'll do the other one, and then we could probably go back to the bench. All right, so I can drill these, you don't probably need to film this. Things on there, Kai. Yeah, good. Rolling. Rolling. So we've got our two bits, got holes. These are going to go in underneath here, make our legs. I want to cut a recess in the top of these. Now I know it needs to be 30 mil from the edge, but how long does it need to be? So the best thing we can do now is cut our long rail to make the two separate parts. All right, so we're going to cut this in half, rip it down, you can go table saw, I'm going to go to the bandsaw. We can rip it down the centre. That will then give me the width I need for those to do the recess to set into the other two boards. So, quick move around the room, we're going back to the bandsaw now. So we want to rip this in half, but where is half? Exactly, spot on. So we've got this little bit, this is going to make our boot jack. We've got a cutout to do up in here. So from a simple point of view, if I set it up, let's bring our guide just down, lock it off. We can do test cut, flip it over. That looks pretty good. So all I've done is make small notch pretty central that fence. So I could wiggle the fence about, but actually where I've set it up, that's pretty good. I've measured it, but I want to be spot on. So trying to look at where we are there, that gives me a good guide. That area is gonna be cut out, so it's not gonna affect anything. Right. Go, yeah. right. Then, our main board now. Nice and gently, not pushing too quick.
and hopefully nice and flush. So we're going to lay out our rails. We've got to recess these in. So I've laid them in position. I've set up an adjustable square. Give me how far in I want to be. I can bring that over. Pencil line on there. Lift the square up. We can draw a line on here. That'll give me my mark where we want to be as a cutout. We're going to do the same the other end, but actually, I'm only going to mark one. Don't need to mark all four of these. All right, we're going to actually then move it about. We're going to cut them on the bandsaw, so if I set the bandsaw up nice and accurately, we can get away with marking the one. Use the machine to give us the accuracy instead of marking every single one individually. So I've got a mark there. I know I'm coming down to my step. So I'm going to go to the bandsaw. We can set that up and we can cut those out. I've set the bandsaw up so we've got our 30mm here, which is the outside edge. We've got a piece of pine G clamped on the black, which is going to act as a lump stop, how deep we can go into this. So we can repeat this cut. So we've got to do all four, but we've got to do both boards. So we'll bring the other board over as well. So all we want to do the one and turn it over. That lump stop works nicely just to give us some repeatable. Have a board the same. First cut done. Then we want to come up. Now I transferred that pencil line just around that edge so I can see it a bit better there. Let's see what we get here. Where are we? I'm going to come over just a tiny bit. That's better. Same with the other one. So we got done our cuts just on here. You can see how we've got that. We've got to cut these out. So we're going to enlarge that whip for a second. So I've done a number of repeat cuts, just moving that fence back in. So on here, really simple to break those off. Now you've got to do all of these, break that in. All right, so we're going to do that exactly the same on the next one. All four both boards. So I'll get those done and we'll join you then for the next little bit. So we've got our grooves cut. Got our break points, we can get into here. We know we can snap this off with our finger, look, clean them out. We're going to rip that down now, so let's break that one out. So we've got to set our fence up. We can take off that back stop. I'm just going to put in a little false fence with something to run against. I can also check my position that I've got there. And so all I've got is something parallel as a piece of wood that helps me keep things lower. I've taken the main fence off the bandsaw as well. Again, that's about trying to keep things lower. I'm just going to look down my line. Where do I want to be? I can adjust my fence. We're not bad. Over a little bit. That's good. Lock it off. So I'm aim with this. The nice thing, we clean the dust off for you. We can get into the groove, I hope. This fine one we can get in nicely, look. This will fit in to there. 
back on. Again, keep your guides nice and low, that's safer, but also more accurate. Now, if I push against the side, oh, we've got to turn them over, look, some cars are there. We're going to come down. Back. Just a little bit short there, we get that. Good. Back in with our fence, we need to parallel the other end up so I can turn the board back over and get into the corner we've just done. Feed slowly. Again, having the guys nice and low will give us more accuracy. Up to our stop. So we got our nice straight cut out. Just going to repeat all of that. I've got to do all of these. Right, so we've got our little haunches or halving type joints cut. I want to set the bandsaw back up to halfway. Now we did that initially with that bit of board. We put it in, we checked it. So we know that's pretty good. I've repositioned the fence, just seeing where things are. That fits nicely into that little slot we've got. Now we can cut these. So I'm going to go there. Then we've got a guide, nice and low. Not feeding too quick, we're going to drop in here. All the way, got a couple of other little cuts to do with these in a minute, but if we break them in half it'll be easier to get to. Let's do the other one. Exactly the same. Our little fence back in. in there. That's quite good actually, that works nicely just where that is. So then we're just going to literally go from the hole. Down to the other one. So all we want to do now, square this corner off. Now the problem I've got with this is the minute I cut it off, it's going to vanish down through the table. So let's put just a small bit of plywood in underneath. We've got something that we can move in nicely. And our guides up just a little bit. One. That's covering the hole. That's giving us a way of just squaring those up. So having cut all those bits out, we've got this funny shape. All right, so we've got recessing underneath where the feet are, where my fingertips are. That rises it off the ground, so it'll dry out. Also means, obviously, it'll sit more level than just having something straight solid. Recess either end, so we can actually fit the rails in at a bit more strength. So these are going back to back. And then I've got to do carefully lift that in, bring it back a bit, look. Just checking at this stage how things come together. That's pretty good. If you need to, you can take a light shaving off the inside hand plane, but they're pretty good on there. I've cleaned out the corners just a little bit with a chisel just to make sure things go in. But that gives us our framework. These will be bonded. In between one end, we're going to have a piece of metal. We'll get to a bit later. So that's why these are 
got that gap. So, so next thing, we're going to drill our holes now for the dowels. Okay, so we're going to mark those out. So at the moment, we know our legs go. Oh, pull those out. Keep them together as they are. Then we want the holes and the locations drilling. So a mock-up we did. Let's just have a quick stretch and bring this back in. So marked out, we know our rails here, the same length. Let's just bring that in. So we've got 70 mil either end. So again, I can use adjustable square. Got to overmark this, especially with the decking, because it's difficult to see where our mark's going to be. Down the other end. Tape measure them up we got here, 220. Find something we can put a line on. Have a board, 220 is there. Flip it round. Bit of a scuffing or a bit of decking there, so it makes it difficult to see. But let's put a line in. Just going to highlight those a bit more. This will soon wear off. Is there. Probably a little bit tricky to see on the camera, but we've got one, two, three, four locations. And again, with the deep grooves in the decking, it makes it difficult to highlight that with a pencil. So I've really gone to town across them, a bit thicker than I'd probably normally do. So from there, we're going to go back to the pillar drill. We're going to set up with our drill bit. We've got to do a little bit of an angle. So on a drill, we've got the 25 mil drill again. We've got our dowel, so we bought these in. These are an Oroco dowel. Right, we bought this in from GNS Timbers, so if you want these, these are fantastic because they won't rot out. Now this is 25.4, so I've got two drills out. I've got an inch one, 25.4, got 25. 25.4, if I put it on, I'll bring that up a little bit. It's a little bit slop. It fits, but I could get tighter. If I go to the 25, that's a nice tight fit. I can push it in. I know with the decking, gonna give a little bit, got a little bit of softness to that material. So we're gonna go with the 25. Currently, got in here the 25.4 that we use for the foot. Let's just swap them over. You could do it all 25.4 mil on those feet holes, not gonna matter, is it? Next thing, I wanna create a little bit of an angle. Played around with the ideas on this. And it gets complicated trying to drill at an angle. So you're going to say, what angle is it? I don't know totally. I set it up, it looked about right. Just used a little bit of double-sided tape. If I can get my fingernails to work now, hopefully we'll get it stuck on here. Now the reason for the double-sided tape, it will just hold this in place. So I'll tape, just going down on here, where it looks about central, that's good. That just becomes a small razor block. I've set the fence up and I'm looking at my outside edge for where the drill tip wants to come down to. So all those little things, we slide it back. So we've got our step block, that just lifts it up a tiny bit, create that little bit of angle. We don't need to make it any more complicated. Done to the next thing I want to know, where are we coming down to? We need to reset our depth stop. So we're checking just on the end there where we come down to. 
it. So I can line up my pencil line, hold it down. So a big holes drilled. Let's take that out. Just bringing chuck down. Going down to a four mil drill. I can get them in there. A bit too much. Just want to see where we are. I've got to play with our depth. Probably enough. So we've got our stop, we've got our full mill drill bit so we can drill all the way down through the center point of these. Temptation is to put a piece of plywood underneath to protect it, but unless it's the same width, it's gonna change the angle. So this is just gonna come out just short of our middle. So it will go all the way through because we raised up that little bit. You can see our center dot. One to get, but a bit short on that one. Got our four. We've got to do the other bit as well. Now again, we've got to make sure we put it on the same way. So I've got the outside edge of the board upwards. So what we have bigger hole, small hole in the centre which lines up with that so we can put a screw up through to hold our dowel in place positively. Also will act as a drain hole so if there's any moisture it will come out through the bottom. All right, let's put this one back in, see where we are, things coming together. Got a lengths of dowel, now these are not even my bits are that long. All right so these are going to go in so we need to cut these to a length, we need to get three out of each bit. So that's got to go in should be good fit into our hole so we're going to go back to the band so we can trim these be nice quick and easy as long as you follow a few sensible things so we want to cross cut these now not always the best thing the problem with this is it'll want to rotate it so we need to be able to control it a little bit better we also need to get them nice and square it's got quite a wiggle we've moved the fence right back that's the maximum i can have which will be good that's actually 12 inches that'll be long enough what we want so That'll go through, but let's get a few things that might help. My defence, that's going to give us something to create our square and repeatable cut. Something to stop it twisting and turning. What can we do? We could do something as simple as a G-clamp on behind in here. Now, I'll be better off having my G-clamp for this operation down in here. So I'll move this back, you'll be able to see it. That's going to counterbalance any roll. So something as simple as just G-clamping that on the back should help us. The goggles back on. 
testing our guides up just out a little bit. We've got one, take it through. We've sat it. And pardon. Got a problem one now because it's relatively short. But we can extend the length of the fence. We can even clamp it on there. Check them up to my stop, I look good. I know when I've done the dale, got a little bit to go, look. Gently coming up. So we've got three at the moment. All the same lamp, nice and clean on the top. We need eight in total, so I'm gonna cut the others exactly the same way, but just that simple setup will add a bit more safety for you. So our last two pins to go in, so fit nice and tight, which is good. Those in there, well, quite, let's have a look, bit of fluff. Fits firm, which is what I wanted. So at the moment, everything's just dry, not gluing anything at this stage. Next thing really want to do, have something for a boot clean, if you like. We've got the piece of metal as well, we're going to sort out for go down in here. I need to trim this a little bit, so I need to get the angle guider out, take a little bit off, so that will fit in between the two and then be clamped in place. The brush, again, just a normal sweet brush. Soft bristle, these are nice and flexible, so it'll fix on, we can screw it on from underneath and fix it. So next stage you're going to cut this, seems criminal doesn't it, cut a brush, but we can have that so it fixes on as well which will look quite nice. And then the last thing, we've got our boot jack to sort out down here, but the moment's coming on nicely, so we're going to cut the brush, I then need to go cut the metal somewhere where it's not going to cause a fire risk, so not inside, and then we'll be back to show you that, but let's cut our brush first, really easy one. So to push our brush through, initially, I don't really want to be there, I want to cut the wood. So that means I've got to have it this way, and it's something to keep it square on the back. So let's go back to our mitre fence. All we're going to do is turn it round. That's something we can then use as a support, we can push that in. So from, need to come up a tiny bit, look, that's good. One there, got to turn it over. We're right on the edge of our hole. One the extension button. Let's see if I can get to it. Now this one's gonna have to work a little bit freehand. We're between the holes, which is good. And all I really wanted to cut off was that little bit. So we go. Two little brushes we can use, holes on right on the edge, so that's good. So we want to inlay the bit of metal in between the two legs. So I've got a piece of metal sheet, this is galvanised, a little bit flexible, but it'd be good. So, what have we got? From there to the top of here, from the underside I've got 60 mil. so I think we'll go with that. Always have problems marking metal, now this has got rough there, just turn that round. Just going to do... A little bit of tape on either end, just to give me a guide point. So we said 60. Get a bit more supported, that's better. Go 60 there. Sixty there. That'll be a good line to work to in a minute. We can come across, cut that off. Alright, so to cut our piece of metal, we're gonna use small prox and grinder with an angle grinder disc. I've strapped a piece of pine on the top, so I've actually got something I can run the side guard off to help create a straight line. We've got our, our mark, so I've looked at the offset. So hopefully, we we'll come to there. Certainly up a bit. Never good with an angle grinder. This could be a good success way. So 
So we've got our bit of metal, we've cut it. It's got to go between the two feet. We've also got to recess it into the top area. So just as a quick look, where does it come to? I can see it comes up to the step there, the same the other side. So I've got that as a guide now of where I need to be on either end. Need to cut that with quite a fine saw. We could go to the bandsaw. We could even just do it just by hand. So let's take this off. I just want to turn it over. Now the only reason I'm using this, I want to make sure I'm level with the ends. So I can just clamp this in. I'll come out there, or we're going to be in the way of what we want to do. There, just, just checking things look square we've run. We've got a little bit of height off the bench, we can use the saw just to come in here now. I'm trying not to block too much on the camera, I'm trying to use my fingertip ideally. I need to be left handed, but that's never going to work, is it? All right, so we're going to be there with our saw, we can use the inside here just as a rest plate. Okay, I'm going to just change hands. I've got to do both sides, I'm trying to be nice and controlled. one. I'm going to flip him all the way around, which means it's going to be a bit easier for me. Got a bit of metal. Slide back in. Check we're up to our stop properly. We are. That's good. Just, I want it that way in, so the holes don't show. I'd suggest, try any bit in there. Take that one off. Okay, a little bit of gluing up. So we're gonna glue the legs together now. So let's do this end first. Oh, pull them apart. Hopefully he says. Got the metal down in here as well, so gotta be careful with that. One off. Two off on our metal strip. Break down our components a bit. Those we know I've got to go back in there. That's down in that end going to want these but we're not going to glue that in yet but we want to glue the flat area when something is a waterproof adhesive I don't cut the bottle open it'll keep better let's put a little bit in our tray Uh, silicon glue brush that'll work nicely on there. Spread it about. Okay. 
I'm just going to roll those, put them together, equal both ends. Smaller clamp, let's just put in there a second. Using the bench as a bit of a guide as well where things are level. Another thing I can do, bring my legs back into play to make sure things are lining up lengthwise. Do the same this end. We know we haven't got as much surface area, so I'm just looking at where the glue is. So let's start with. Let's get them located. Need our bit of metal. Now I've got a bit of a bear on here, so I'm just going to flip it over because it's easier to feed in from the underside. Who said that was fast grab? Let's just hold one in the middle. Got the bit of metal just to come up a little bit, so I need to push that. But this is the important bit we're clamping. All right, good. So we'll leave those to dry. We're using the top rails really just as a position to make sure everything's lining up totally. So we've got to have the bit of metal in. These will pick off tomorrow. We can fix those. So we'll let that dry overnight. And then we'll keep going with it. Okay, so we've had to move rooms a little bit from yesterday. So we last thing we did, we glued these together, let them dry. So I've let them dry overnight because I purely glued them. So put it back together, we've got our frames coming on, we've got our metal strip, we've got our brush bits to fix, so we know about those. Next thing, the boot jack. So I've done a couple of things. Um, I've drilled a few holes. So I've used a 50 mil first to bit, centre one, I think it's about 80 mil down to the back of the hole. Got our two halves. Now, the Forston is the only drill that you can drill half a circle. So, on the pillar drill, just drill those out. That's going to give us a recess. So, this is really trying to play around with that boot jack idea. My initial plywood template is an idea I've even used just to get a bit of a guide of where things are going to be. Okay, this worked quite nice. Trying to make it as wide as I can on the bottom because that's going to have more stability. So, having drilled those out, I've then drawn on a bit of a shape. And a cut out bit for where obviously we've got to get your foot in. All right, so cheated a little bit, but I didn't think you'd want to watch me do more holes, it's a bit boring. All right, so now we're going to go band so we can cut this out. So I come over to the band so we're going to cut out our boot jack shape. I want something as a curve down in here. I wish you drew the stripe, but it's going to make it more unstable at the bottom. So playing around with different ideas, but definitely cut out on the top. Then we're going to cut off the side bits. Again, let's bring our guides down so we're nice and low. I've got a little light on the back, that's good. Send our shape in. Now it's easier to push for this, so at this stage, the temptation is we could go into our circle, we could turn it right round, but I'll gently bring it back. Now I've stopped the band saw because I don't want to pull the blade off. 
them back in again. Coming into the hole, just slow it down. So chop bit done. Okay, a little bit of clean on there. I wonder actually, just with the edge of the blade, if I look at it a bit more, that's good. Trying to figure out which side we'll tackle first. Let's come to here. Just really shacking at this stage. Does the shape look about the same? So I can lay that on the top. We're pretty good actually. So we've got our cut out bit. So I've been cutting it off on the band, so just want to soften these edges really where your shoes are gonna go in. So flat spoke shape, inside edge. A bit tricky to do because I've got the decking side. We'll flip it over, you'll get to see it in a second. Round to the top edge. If I angle the spoke shape, I can get in there nicer. Get back. I'm just really rounding that over. So one side, let's flip him over. Trickier coming across that serration in the decking area. It'll fade through nicely. Around the top corner, so build our shape. Yeah, and this is an outside project, so I haven't got to be that accurate. But we'll just soften the corners. Not really going to need any sanding. Figure out which way up we're That has our top. Soften the edge so you can get your shoes in, so that'll be good. Now, our next bit, we've got to get into here. So I'll just see where we are. And I want to cut it in so it fits in. At the moment, nothing is fixed. We have done, and we're just going to lose a few things. It's all going to come apart. A little bit of a look at where this wants to sit in roughly as a shape, as an angle. So I've drawn a couple of lines on the edge here to give me a guide of where it is. Um, don't have you really say them, you might see them on there. Pencil lines have got a guide where, going for the top one, don't need to come all the way back, just that little bit, so that will sit in, create an angle. I've marked a centre line 
And then I've got a rough guideline at the moment on my width of where I want to be here. So I'm giving myself some spacing, get it equal. That needs to sit in. All right. So Japanese saw, just on the inside of that line there. That's it. Straight at the moment, coming down from my angle. Now I've got to come down to the bottom and angle towards that back edge. Remember, this is cutting, pulling towards me. One to the other side. One there. Let's just reach out our clamp. Then we're going to do the bits in between. That's got the majority of that cut through. And then chisel. We can stir it to come up through. Coming down to that edge. Then let's start to slice a bit more now. Just checking the corner one, checking they've got a break line so I'm not going to splinter things more. So pairing through. Just leveling this off. Chisel grip and stance have changed a lot from the initial cleaning out, if you like. A lot closer with the chisel blade, not holding the handle. That's acting as a stop. Need more of this end, I can see. I taper across, so I need to take a bit more off the back, which is good because I've still got quite a few saw lines. Uh, rest in the back of the chisel, just straightening out now. I've got a slight lump I can feel. Just this middle bit. Check where we are on the front bit. Come back the other way now.
feel what's going on. Again, feel a slight lump. If anything, be nice if it's slightly hollow in the middle. Just got to change direction just to come down. So I can get that front face, the bottom bit, nearer me. Take the clamp, so I'm going to slide it back. Then we're going to start to look at where we want to get things in. Now I know it's not going to fit in at this stage, we've got the curved shape. Got to deal with that. And setting things up squarely. So I can use the bench, I can look at the recess points either side of where things are going to fit. Let's see where we are here. Drawing in pen, just really the fact that we can see more hopefully on the camera. So I don't know if that shows up, we've got a little line just to chisel out. First line of attack, can we take a little bit off with the saw? That'll create a brake line. And just work on those little corners. Come up round. Do this side first to get more light. Clean that in. Got a little bit just on the back. Clean out. <laughs> so, okay, so having got our chiseled out bit, now we can do the assembly bit. First thing I want to really do, put the brush on either side. So I've drilled a few pilot holes, got three, one, two, three. I've looked at where the brush is going to go. I want the curved edge on the front, but your boot's going to come in. So I've turned the brush over just so you can see it more. So I've got my screws, it's going to go on there. So how far back of that? We've got our clamps. So we've got our brush, going to put them on. We want to make sure they're equal in length. The curve is going to overhang fractionally. So we'll use our square just as a quick reset tool. That first one. And again, pen line just because it shows up better on this. We could bring the two together or transfer it to there. That's going to give us the position of where we want to clamp our brush onto. Got to clamp it on. Make life easier, let's use these. Something just to set it up on. Brush on there, trying to get it level with the inside, which isn't that tricky to do. We need a clamp. Clamp it up. So I'm looking at the wooden face of the brush being level with the inside face of our board. That's good. I can drop it over. Small drill bit, just to work as pilot drill. And so you guys can probably see, I'm gonna turn them right down to there for a second. One, 
two, we've got three to put in in total. So screws, do you bet this is an external project? Gonna go stainless steel screws, something that won't tarnish, rust, corrode, all those little things are gonna make a difference. Get a level, just gonna play with adjustment on there, a bit too much, look, bring it back. Want to pull it in so it's just flush. That's good. Check nothing's moved on the other end. Why no glue in this? Um, really the fact that if anything happens over the years, you can take this off, it'll be replaceable. If I glue it on, more problems later. So, one of them, the same do with the other one. So again, we've got our pilot holes, we've got our line. Let's set it up. Got that pen line we just put on. Clamp. Rush up to the pen line, that looks good. Again, turn it over. Fix the two first. Last one just to put in the middle. Move the screws for a second before we knock them on the floor. We should now and start to put it all together. Still got access to get to the dowel holes on here. I've got that metal strip, so I've got to drop it onto that saw cut that we did down in here, over on metal. So working by feel on this side, look, there it is. Bring it in. Again, get things in position. That looks pretty good. We need something just to get a tap with. Get it flush, flush on there. This end, I'm not gonna be able to play with too much because the metal's gonna hold it. Just checking we're in, that's better. Good on there. Roll it over. So on the underside of the feet, I've got pilot holes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Just drilled through. So they will locate. So in reality, the screws are gonna hold this together again. So just looking at what size screws we can have. Again, let's go back to that main box. Wanna check that we go through, but not come out. That's good. Pilot drill again. Just extending it a little bit. We can check it against the length of the drill. Screw in, I just want to bring this up and see we've got a small gap. So instead of fighting the screw to pull it down, we should be able to pull that in. One. Ok, 
and just bring the clamp in so as you're doing anything here, it's not so much it's going to move, but you're not pushing against that bit of wood and pushing it down as you screw it up or even drill it. Quite a few guys will say, why do you pilot drill to stop the wood fibers splitting? Turn around. So we'll do the back one first. Check it's flush. So, up to that bit we've got our boot scrub, the main framework together. This stage we can do your dowels, so uh, we know these push it in. Gonna give this a bit of a... Anything that I want, top or bottom. Again, no glue in case anything really happens. It would be nice just to have them dry. So from the underside, we did that center point hole. Put a screw in. Do something a little bit different on these. Main screws we've just used to countersunk. They're pulling flush. I'm going to go with domed headed ones and under here. So these have got round pan head. So they sit and feel nice and underneath. Let's change our drive a bit. Let's get the longer one out of the box. One side, turn it back over, down, nothing on there. Get those in. Bit trickier on this one, it's gonna have to come right up. Over. I 
think we're done with the screws for a minute. Got a little bit of twist somewhere, so that's back to there. Our boot jack at this point, we could fix if you want. I'm just going to have it as pushing. Um, Toying with the idea of having two little round legs, so uh, we got some off cuts maybe of the day, or you could rise it up so you could actually have your boot jack as an independent thing. But at the moment, it fits in there beautifully. All right, so we got our boot clean and scrape, our jack, and our hangers. So, hopefully, and I know it's a bit of a weird project, um, more of a joinery project. Some of you might you know, appeal to a bit of machinery, a pillow drill, a bit of handwork. You can cut things in different ways than what we've done. But quite a nice little outdoor project you can leave out there. Got your boot scrape, your jack, all those little things that will help you. So, hope you've enjoyed. Give us a thumbs up, subscribe, share it if you like. And we will see you next time for more Woodworking Wisdom. Thanks then. Bye.